what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you my guide to alexander the great in rise of kingdoms all right let's crack open the soda this is a tradition around here okay now, Alexander the Great is a commander that you've seen me talk a ton about here on YouTube and on Twitch. I use him all the time in war for KVK out in the open field. You've seen me spin hundreds of times of his uh, Wheel of Fortune just to get more sculptures of him. So that should give you guys a really good idea as to how good I actually think this commander is, not only for a player like myself, but also for free to play and low spenders and we're going to talk about why he's such a good investment for that specific type of player now if you don't have alexander the great yet the way that you obtain him is through the wheel of fortune so he shows up in a kingdom around day 206 i believe and he'll show up for three wheels of fortune consecutively just like every other wheel of fortune commander so he's definitely a commander that i would recommend spinning as much as you can for his sculptures because guys the specific commander wheel of fortunes on average are about i think it's 600 gems per legendary head now of course it's a gamble so keep that in mind but if you were to do the math based on the probabilities over a long period of time i think it's around 580 to 600 gems per legendary head which is some of the best value that's some of the cheapest you can get a legendary commander sculpture and sculptures of alexander are incredibly good because alexander himself is just so amazing so we're going to talk about that later but if you guys haven't gotten him yet at least summon him right but he is one of those commanders where i would i would recommend uh investing a lot of gems into that wheel once it does come around if you can obviously if you have the gems if you can afford it or whatever with that being said most of the time the first legendary that people focus on as a free to play or low spender or even as a big spender is isong Ye, right and that means that if you were super active in rise of kingdoms playing every single day and doing every single event and playing as smart as you possibly could be and saving up all of your sculptures you could probably expertise isong Ye in 200 to 250 days depending on how active you are again right um so what that means is that alexander's going to show up on his wheel right around the time uh, the time of you finishing up your isong Ye, uh and that means that he's a great commander to focus on next they're a great pair and i think that isong is probably a little bit more valuable uh to your everyday player out in the open field because he's just so good at so many things but i think alexander is a close second as far as value that you get for legendary commander sculptures that you invest so if you're wondering who do i expertise after isong i think if you went with alexander that would be a really solid pick let's talk about alexander's talent trees he is an infantry versatility and attack commander so what does that mean well the versatility tree is useless but he has a single build for the talent trees in the infantry and attack tree that we're going to talk about and there's some very small tweaks that you could do to it to make it you know micro optimized for exactly what you're going to be using him for but in general they're like 98 percent of his talent build is pretty much set in stone in my opinion and i'll show you guys that later let's talk about his skills okay alexander the great is he's he's amazing in the skill department okay his first skill is called shield of the king and actually let's read the unexpertise version okay basically he gains a shield that lasts four seconds and absorbs a damage factor of 1200 and at the same time will put up a smaller shield for two seconds to a nearby ally with the smallest percentage of troops remaining with a damage factor of 600 so that one lasts two seconds it's a much smaller shield but what we're, what we're seeing here is uh, the exact same shield strength and duration as charles martel but instead of getting this uh this damage bonus here that you get with charles martel uh what you're doing is you're supporting a weaker ally in the open field and that weaker march could be your march right you can buff your own marches with this assuming that your march is the one that has the least amount of troops remaining but uh, what's important about this is that we're already seeing alexander doing more than a single more than one role right we're seeing a little bit of tankiness with the shield and we're seeing a little bit of support there so let's keep that in mind and move on to his second skill now this goes without saying but you want to max that first skill before you move on okay you absolutely this first skill get it to five and then bring him to two stars and leave him there 
because this second skill called lead the charge is incredibly good as well and it says while on the map troops led by this commander are immune to all damage reduction debuffs and their normal attacks have a 10 percent chance to deal an additional damage to the target damage factor of 1700 and reduce its healing effect by 30 percent for five seconds this skill is crazy good okay we have to dissect this a little bit first off you can't reduce the amount of damage that alexander's army does right whether he's primary or secondary he hit the army that he's a part of their damage reduction uh you can't apply that sort of debuff to his army which is insanely good because as rise of kingdoms gets older just as a game the devs are getting a little bit more creative with what they can do to commanders and and how they can make the latest greatest commander even better than the last aka power creep but they're the one of the ways that they do that is by implementing all sorts of buffs and debuffs and things like that but alex is somebody that you don't have to worry about his damage getting debuffed because of the skill next he has a 10 percent chance of a single target damage factor of 1700 which let's just take a look at genghis khan uh his damage factor 1700 as well and that's his active primary skill now i know that it's this is sort of apples and oranges right because this is a passive passive skill with a 10 percent chance of popping off but keep in mind this is every normal attack that alexander gives has a 10 percent chance to pop this off so what does that mean well uh each normal attack it takes about one second right so that means once every 10 seconds approximately you're going to be dealing a single target damage factor of 1700 which is pretty much the same amount of time that it takes for your first active skill to go off right now if you have a rage engine over time you're going to be popping off skills faster and faster than 10 seconds but uh, again that's just an average and the skill you know there's a little bit of randomness involved but the amount of times what i'm trying to say is the amount that this is going to pop off isn't that much less frequent than Genghis Khan's active skill or just an active skill in general maybe maybe Khan isn't the perfect example because he does have an insanely good rage engine rage engine but regardless this is going to pop off more often than you think because you see that 10 percent you think oh that's a low chance but in general this is going to happen pretty often and then finally if you hit a target like Richard, then it reduces his healing effectiveness by 30% for five seconds, which makes him insanely good for something like the ruins fight in light versus darkness season three through season five or however many they continue to do that um which is amazing right because that's a that's a commander richard is a commander you see a lot in that light versus darkness uh the, the fight at the ruins right and so this healing effect is a counter to somebody like richard but keep in mind lots of other commanders do healing as well Cao Cao does healing you remember that he does healing on his fourth skill we also have somebody like constantine he only heals once an hour but if you're able to time that like dude that would be super super savage there's other commanders that heal like joan of arc right there's a lot of healing involved in this game the biggest one though is richard and this is a counter to that so all of that being said we've only talked about his first two skills his first two skills are so good and that means alexander as a 5511 commander is absolutely viable and something that you can do as a free to play or low spender but alexander is so good as a commander that i do recommend eventually you probably want to expertise him and we'll talk about why his third skill frontline commander says while on the map infantry units led by this commander gain 30 percent increased march speed and increased attack dude 30 percent of attack is crazy the march speed is a bonus and this is going to make him a really fast infantry commander pairing him with martel that's expertise they're going to be zooming man they're going to be flying across the battlefield which is really really crazy and when you really think about it what that's going to do is a lot of times the downside of infantry is they get swarmed and bogged down with uh march speed reduction effects like Cao Cao and things like that or by bars right uh what this is going to do is just make it a little bit easier for alexander to get out of those traps and that's going to ultimately save you a hospital bill now of course the 30 percent attack bonus is crazy good because it's just he's going to deal damage right he's going to he has a ton of attack stats his fourth skill adds on to that right it says when not shielded troops led by this commander gain 40 percent attack when he's shielded he gains 30 percent defense like dude that's crazy we're talking about when his shield is down he has 70 percent attack buff like what that's crazy and when his shield is up not only is it absorbing damage but he gets 30 percent defense which is a stat that he's lacking because besides that he's relatively squishy for an infantry commander so his all four skills what we have to look at here right all four skills 
are battle skills. They all apply in PvP combat. That's not something that you can say for all commanders. Look at Cao Cao. This right here, a barbarian skill. Look at Ethelflaed, right? She also has a barbarian skill. You look at even Minamoto or even Martel. Martel has a garrison skill. Even Yi Song Ye, a garrison skill. Look at Constantine, a garrison skill. All four of Alexander's skills are battle ready skills, which means that he has just one more skill than a lot of other commanders that is going to be applicable in the open field, which is really, really good. The other thing we have to point out is that two of his skills only work while he's on the map. So while he does do a lot of amazing things, he can't be a garrison commander. Anytime you see an Alexander as a garrison lead, that is a mistake, right? Because he's losing his 30% attack. He's losing that single target damage factor. He's losing the damage reduction debuff, uh, the immunity to that debuff. He's losing the healing effect reduction. You don't ever want him in the flag, but if he's on the map, all of his skills are applicable. Let's look at his expertise before we move on. Um, essentially what this does is he has the same shield for the same duration and the same smaller shield for your ally also for the same duration. But on top of that, there is an AOE area around Alexander where up to three enemy troops in that area take 30% increased damage for four seconds. So this is another example of a support trait that Alexander possesses, right? So not only is he shielding an ally, he's also making the enemy take 30% more damage for four seconds. That's crazy, crazy good. So all of his skills are amazing for PVP as long as you're fighting in the open field on the map. So what does that mean? Well, this is an excellent commander for free to play. Why is that, right? Why is that? Well, uh, who's going to be leading rallies, right? It's going to be your T5 whales who have max tech and amazing commanders and amazing gear. Who's going to be the captain of your garrison? It's going to be T5 whales with amazing commanders and amazing gear, right? So what does that leave free to play? Well, that means that free to play's job in war is to join rallies, join flag defenses, and where possible, they should have presence in the open field to prevent the enemies from reinforcing their rallies or their flags. So one of your roles as a free to play player is to fight in the open field, right? You're not going to be leading rallies or defending flags, but you're going to be fighting in the open field. And Alex has four amazing skills for doing that. And even if he's only five, five, one, one, he still has an amazing amount of versatility out in the open field, dealing damage. He has a shield for a little bit of tankiness and he's supporting all of your allies by giving them that shield, reducing healing effects. There's a lot to love about Alexander for a free to play player. Now, what if you're a mega whale? Well, guess what? Alexander Isong Ye is a rally pair for season two of KVK. Alexander Isong is an exceptionally good pair as long as you hold the open fields. You could even do Alexander Charles Martel as a rally combination as well. And I think I even have some of the uh, reports from when that happened. This is what happens when you rally with Alexander and Charles Martel, right? You see that the players that are swarming this rally are getting absolutely obliterated obliterated and that's because alex and charles well alex as a rally leader it has all of his skills on the map and charles has crazy amount of stats that he's offering for infantry but also his damage bonus on his primary and his counterattack damage is crazy plus when alex is swarmed he gets a ton of rage in his rage engine and we'll talk about that in a talent so you can lead rallies with alexander either with Martel or Isong, depending on what what you're looking to do. Now that's primarily for again season two of KVK. Once you hit season three, that's when Attila Decada comes out, and that's like the meta, right? So you pretty much like you're you're basically pigeonholed into doing that because whoever can do that the most is gonna win. With that being said, let's talk more about his talents, okay? This is the talent build that I am currently using for Alexander the Great. You can see I made my way all the way up to elite soldiers. This gives you seven and a half percent of infantry stats, which is amazing. I made my way over to the strong of body, which gives you 6% health, something that Alex really, really needs because he mostly is buffing his attack, which leaves him a little bit more vulnerable. We also grabbed effortless for a maximum of 10% damage dealt increase 
after the first 40 seconds of fighting although it does go up incrementally every 10 seconds so as the battle goes on the longer it goes on the more damage you're going to be doing which is great you also reduce the damage you take with armored joints now there's a couple things you could change this is my favorite build but you could take the three points out of fleet of foot which gives you six percent more march speed which again i like because it can help you prevent uh your hospital from feeling faster by being able to leave engagements that aren't favorable from you uh for you but you could remove these three points and you could also remove this one percent for defense and you could grab something like fight to the death and what this is going to do is increase all your damage by six percent but increase damage you take by three percent that's kind of more of a all in on offensive um i i just don't really like paying my hospital bill so I, I don't really go for this but you absolutely could if you're more of that type of player that's just very aggressive um or if you know for certain that your alex is only ever going to be paired with somebody like richard or martel who don't do any skill damage at all you could easily come over here and grab martial mastery which will increase your normal normal attack damage by six percent but decrease active skill damage but guess what you're not going to be doing any of that with those commanders anyway now if we talk about commander pairings um you could absolutely pair alex with somebody like sun tzu or Yi song ye and in those instances i think this talent here is actually detrimental to you uh so i wouldn't recommend grabbing that but again if you're only ever going to be using richard or martel with him or somebody else like maybe joan or whoever uh, as long as they're not doing skill damage you absolutely could grab that as well it's up to you like i said for me this is the build that i choose because i like the march speed i like the extra two percent of stats here and the other stuff in here is a little bit more min max conditional if you wanted to go and grab things like this this or even if you wanted like unyielding you i guess could potentially do that i don't know but this is the build you can change it slightly if you want to but i think this is a really solid place to start when you're leveling up your alex and a lot of times alex is going to be your primary commander because of his attack tree here this burning blood gives you six rage every time he's attacked which means that if you're being surrounded in the open fields you're suddenly going to get a ton of extra rage and this is one of the reasons why attila is such a savage in rallies it's because you can't swarm attila takeda because what that means is its active skills are going to go off like crazy once you do uh, and you're just going to get completely obliterated by the just by that combination right so this kind of applies here for alexander as well burning blood is amazing as a primary now if you want more tankiness then you could put him secondary and put a primary like martel or um richard for example but let's talk a little bit more about some of the other pairs in depth right so just going down the list alexander primary ethel fled secondary definitely something you could do you probably have better choices but if you're free to play or a low spender then ethel fled is absolutely going to give you a really nice half circle aoe which is crazy you're going to want to bring like uh, a couple of uh what is it archers and cavalry just a very tiny amount um and if you do that then you obviously you don't want to grab this top talent here or anything that only happens if you have full infantry so keep that in mind uh but you could pair these two together theoretically if you wanted to i guess maybe you would want maybe ethel fled primary actually now that i think about it because then you, you maybe you wouldn't want the infantry tree anyway um this is a pairing that you could do because aoe solid damage all around good in the open field having alex primary is going to uh pretty much make it so they're not going to want to attack you as much as seeing an ethel fled in the open field but again keep that in mind that pairing specifically is actually one of the only pairings where this build will not work because you do want the extra damage uh from what is it this skill here right the 20 percent increased attack more traditional pairings though are obviously richard and we already talked about this richard provides the tankiness and the healing that alexander is missing so alex is all in on doing damage on supporting your allies in the open fields richard is all about tanking damage and healing your troops and so perfect synergy with these two amazing combination right sort of the same thing with charles martel although martel doesn't have the healing he does provide another shield and the shields don't stack perfectly um you'll get about six seconds of shield time instead of eight seconds total right because they're four seconds each but the way that they pop off it's really only six seconds total um that's just how the game works but you get a lot of stats that you wouldn't otherwise get because mostly um you get attack from alexander you get here you get defense and health plus you get a ton of counter attack damage and the increased damage bonus with the active skill here i love that pairing uh esong another insanely good pairing again we talked about the rally combo here with a primary alex esong secondary this of course would be a full infantry rally and really it's only for season two basically 
of kvk um but you could do this in the open field as well to basically if you get surrounded then you're gonna get a ton of rage from your alex uh being primary and that means esong is gonna rain down on those surrounding you which is awesome you also could pair with constantine this is gonna be sort of the same reason that you would pair with uh richard right um he gives you attack reduction of 40 percent reduced damage taken by 10 percent you get 40 percent infantry health which is absolutely something that alex needs because he doesn't get any, any of this from any of the other skills plus you get a major uh healing factor and when constantine gets a shield skill damage taken is reduced by 10 or up to 40 percent and that's a big deal right that's that's crazy good you also could bring joan of arc along with him um i think joan is better paired with somebody like richard or maybe martel right but you absolutely could do an alex joan of arc if you wanted to if that was some of the only options that you had and you just wanted a really supportive infantry march that you didn't think would get attacked that's something that you could do of course sun tzu is the guy you could pair sun tzu with pretty much anybody but especially with alex because he gives you 10 percent health he also reduces damage you take by 10 percent he also has a rage engine and some nice aoe so i really love that with sun tzu i think that's a really great pairing as well beyond that you could do ulji because he does give you 30 percent stats uh he also if he's surrounded like he will pop off with this last skill and he has a little bit of a defense reduction on that primary there's some cool things about ulji uh if you're a free-to-play player or a low spender then maybe this is a pair that you could consider in the open field but um obviously if the enemy sees an ulji they're probably going to swarm this army down pretty hard i don't know it is what it is you could do it now of course you could also pair with somebody like guan yu i just I, the thing with guan yu alex is that it's a little bit squishy for an infantry march in my opinion but you do have the three second silence you do have an aoe damage factor of 2000 which is crazy uh that's assuming guan yu as primary there's a lot to love there's some more march speed and an attack bonus in here as well and guan yu does benefit from getting a shield but i don't actually know how that works if guan yu is primary and then alex pops his shield is guan ever gonna pop off a skill in that three second window i don't think it's possible but let me know in the comment section below if i if i'm wrong about that but anyway those are the main pairs for alexander i think um alexander is just overall an amazing commander now if we're talking about gear i did make a video talking about the after the latest update uh some of the best infantry gear progression that you could go through uh this is the gear that i normally use on my alex in the open field when alex is fighting pvp um but right Right now i have it set up as my canyon team because i'm not really doing too much fighting um and so richard is my primary for the canyon team uh but this is the the gear that i use on my alex a lot of this is focused on infantry attack right there's attack here as well so keep that in mind but check out the um infantry equipment guide if you want more information about that with that being said guys if you found this video informational or useful or entertaining or anything like that hopefully you will drop a thumbs up on the video it does help out my channel a ton i'm not just saying that it really really does and of course if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video as always my social media links are in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on instagram twitter my discord and as well as twitch where i do live stream rise of kingdoms and finally there's a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your mac it's a program called blue stacks and you're going to experience fewer crashes than if you were to play the same game on maybe an older phone so like i said it's absolutely free you have nothing to lose by clicking the link down below and giving it a try it's my favorite way to play as you can see the cursor on the screen so if i love it maybe you guys will love it too with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace